Good morning. Let's begin our celebration this morning in the name of the Lord, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And now please enjoy our prelude music. I'd like to welcome everyone to this, the celebration at Clarkstown Reformed Church of the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, thanks for being with us uh, in this um, remote capacity. It's been a long time that we haven't been together physically, but we will be back on Mother's Day, May 9th. So please, if you're in the area, uh, make an effort to come back. We'll have beautiful music. We'll have a wonderful celebration, and we will be together physically again. So uh, praise God for that. And if you can't be with us, please still come online because we will be live streaming that service, and we will be posting it on YouTube so that if you've been coming to our church from a distance, you can continue to do that. You are our family, and we would like you to continue to be a part of our family. But thank you all for worshiping with us today. Uh, you are what makes this a church, and this is the time that the church celebrates the resurrection of Christ, and his resurrection is a signal to the world that life always triumphs over death. So thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for that saving message which has been entrusted to us by our Christ. As the Father has sent him so he has sent us. And why did the Father send him? The Father sent him for life. The Father sent him so that we might all have life in his name. And we have been sent by him so that the world might live and not die. And, and that is a very important mission that each of us shares so as I welcome you, I also encourage you to not let coming to church be the extent of your religious practice. Because coming to church is where you get strength, where you find fellowship, where you feel love. But all of that is given to you so that you can go out into the world and be the presence, the saving presence of Christ. So welcome, thank you for being here, 
and please enjoy our celebration today. And now please hear our call to worship brought to us by Susan on the organ and Chris Cantu tenor. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing that we can be born again. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing Christ is risen from the dead. The angel upon the tombstone said he is risen just as he said. Quickly now, go tell his disciples that Jesus Christ is no longer dead. Joy to the world, he is risen. Alleluia, he's risen. Alleluia, he's risen. Let us pray. Faithful God, your son Jesus has entrusted to us the mission which you entrusted to him. Keep us faithful to that mission. Show us the opportunities that you provide for us every day to bring his love to someone. Maybe it's a brother, a sister, a parent, a spouse, a coworker, a person we meet on the street, someone who, who waits on us at a restaurant or serves us coffee at a diner. However we meet the people that you send to us, let us be vehicles of your love and may we be instruments of your peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. He is your son and our brother forever and ever. And we can all say, Amen. Summary of God's Law from the first letter of John, chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world.
Jesus, our Christ, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. And so grateful for the forgiveness and the love that is ours through his blood shed on the cross, we now confess our sinfulness to God and to one another, trusting that we are forgiven, we are loved, and we are sent to be disciples of Jesus in the world. Lord, in your resurrection and ascension to the Father, you have triumphed over sin and death. Trusting in your abiding love, we confess to you and to each other. Whenever we are tempted to fear death, give us courage to confess your Easter victory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Whenever we are distracted by petty conflicts, keep our minds on your reconciling love. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Whenever we are overwhelmed by the power of evil, reveal again to us your triumph over the destructive powers of oppression. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Grateful for your forgiving love, may our lives give witness to your salvation. Amen. Amen. Creator God, you're the Father of mercies. Through the death and resurrection of your Son, you have reconciled the world to yourself, and you have sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sin. Through the ministry of the Church, you have given us pardon and peace. And so now each one of us is assured that we have pardon and peace in the name of the one God who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit through the blood of Jesus the Christ shed for us on the cross. And we can all say, Amen. And now, assured that we're forgiven, find the peace in your heart that surpasses all understanding. That peace can only be yours and it can only be mine if we let go of all the pettiness and the jealousies and the, and the unforgiveness that blocks God's love from flowing through our being. So let's let go of all of that baggage now. Let's forgive what heretofore we've thought unforgivable so that we can know the forgiveness of the God who forgives us while we were yet sinners. And may the peace of that God flow through you and in you and beyond you. May the peace of the Lord fill you and everyone you're with. Now, please share some sign of God's peace. If you're with someone, greet them. If you're not, pray. Pray for peace in the world, in the nation, in our communities, in our churches, in our families, in our hearts. Pray especially for those to whom you have expressed unforgiveness in the past. Be joyful, joyful, the Lord is alive, come on. Be joyful, joyful, the Lord is alive. Be joyful, joyful, the Lord is alive, come on. Be joyful, joyful, the Lord is alive. Be joyful, joyful, the Lord is alive. Our prayer for illumination. Almighty God, Open our minds and our hearts to the inspiration of the Spirit. May you bless our reading and the hearing of the Word. A reading from Acts, chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Pleasant when we leave 
life in unity. It is like precious oil, like fresh born in two. We gather here together with our hearts and voices raised to God, who's the center of our unity in praise. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life for evermore. When we live in unity, it is like precious oil, like fresh born in two. We gather here together with our hearts and voices raised to God, who's the center of our unity in praise. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Creator God, fill us with your spirit as we reflect on the gospel of your son, Jesus. As we hear the story of his appearances after he rose from the dead, and as we begin to understand how the disciples felt when they saw him in their midst again and heard his voice call them to be at peace. We ask this in Jesus' name and through the power of the Spirit that he has given us so that we might fulfill our mission to bring his word and his good news to the ends of the earth. We ask this in his name. Amen. Chris died a year ago yesterday. The last year 
or so. The last years of his life really were no picnic. Although a relatively young man who had lived a productive and vital life, he was a guy who could take charge and get things done. He was really a powerful man in his prime. But in the end, he began to lose it all. He lost his ability to think and to see and to speak clearly. He reached a point where his family couldn't take care of him at home anymore. He went into a nursing home. And in that nursing home, he needed constant care. But he had loved ones who would go there every day and make sure that he had socks that matched his shirts and, and that he looked like a million bucks and that he had a happy life even though it wasn't his old life. But then a year ago, because of the COVID virus, Chris died. And that family that had struggled to, 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 to love him and, and, and that family that could see him leaving them slowly with his Alzheimer's and, and, and his other physical difficulties, they were left with grief. Because although he hadn't been the person that they knew years ago, he was there. And he was theirs. And his death, death left a hole in their hearts. And that hole continues to ache to this very day. On the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples of Jesus, who had just seen their friend brutalized, humiliated, tortured, and publicly executed, were brokenhearted. They were brokenhearted for all sorts of reasons. Their dreams were dashed. They thought Jesus was going to be the one. They thought he's the guy who's going to come and save Israel. He's the Messiah. But after the crucifixion, no one in their right mind thought he was the Messiah. Because Messiah's triumph, they aren't tortured and killed. So the belief in Jesus as the Messiah was pretty much dead on that first day of the week following Jesus' death. And their dreams of his Messiahship and his kingdom and the restoration, they were gone too. Gone also, though, was their friend. They had traveled with him. He had taught them. They saw his compassion. They saw the power of God working in his healings. And, and that friendship survived even their hopes of his messiahship and they were brokenhearted that their friend had died and had died so young and so painfully and publicly and so these people were crushed with grief and lastly they were frightened to death for themselves because if the leaders of the temple and the Romans could collaborate to get rid of their teacher, maybe they would also like to get rid of the students. And so they were afraid for their lives. And we find him, them this evening of the first night of the week behind locked doors in an upper room. And while they are there, while their fear is at its apex, while the brokenness of their hearts just ached with loss, all of a sudden, he's there. And he's not a resuscitated corpse. The wounds, except for the, the wounds in his hands and his side, which are reminders to all, including us, of his sacrifice. 
But all the other scars and bruises, they're gone because he is looking glorified and great. He is, in fact, the embodiment of the glory of God. He's, he's fully alive. And he stands in their presence and they don't know what to make of it. And he says one thing to them over and over and over again. He says, peace be with you. And he's not talking about, about uh, the type of peace that is like the absence of conflict. Because he's not saying to them that there will be no conflict. There will be plenty of conflict. He knows there will be, there will be conflict. They probably know that, that there will be conflict too. But he's not saying that. He's saying, he's saying, know this, God is with you. That Know this, that I have triumphed over death. See, death is the great enemy. Death is the end. They saw him dead and they thought, well, that's it. No more Jesus. And when he stood in their midst, they knew. And they had a hard time getting their minds around it. But they knew that death had died in him. And that life triumphed. That God is the God of life and not death. That the God who worked in Jesus was still working in Jesus. And now that Jesus was in front of them and he was telling them, be at peace. Know that God is with you and nothing can hurt you when God is on your side. Nothing can ultimately take away the life that God gives you. And so peace, peace be with you. And then he sends them on a mission. They're still trying to figure out what he's doing. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. See, this is very important for us to hear because we are sent with them. We are sent to do what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? Jesus came to reconcile the world to the Father. Jesus came to bring the sinners back. Jesus came to forgive. Jesus came to make whole. And our job is nothing less than that. We're not called to look down our snouts at others. We're not called to feel better than others. We are called to offer the world an alternative to the power and the pettiness that seems to be so prevalent in our age and probably has been prevalent in every age. We have been sent to reconcile each other and to reconcile the world to God. And there is only one way to do that. We must love each other. And we must love even our enemies. And we must do it when it hurts to do it and when it's hard to do it. But that's what we've been sent to do. Jesus was sent by the Father to suffer and die on the cross for others. That doesn't make suffering and death good. Quite the contrary. Suffering and death are lousy. But when we suffer... And when even we die in faithfulness to our Christ or out of love for others, that's when our suffering and our pain becomes united to his on the cross and that becomes beautiful. So never waste a problem because every problem can be united to the cross if we ask the Lord to do it. Lord, I'm having a real hard day, but you had hard days too. That Friday, that last Friday of your life, pretty terrible. Let my suffering be united to yours. Make this suffering sacrificial. That, that is doing what he did. And then Jesus says, Again, peace be with you. See, that's the gift we bring. We don't bring the end of conflict. It's not going to be an easy life for any one of us. Every one of us is going to face suffering, loss, and ultimately our own death, the loss of everything. But what we don't have to lose is peace because that's the gift that Christ gives the disciples, the peace that he gives 
cannot be overcome. Peace be with you, he says. And then he breathes into them. The Greek word says into, not in, or on. He breathes into them. As God at the creation breathed life into Adam, so now Jesus breathes life into his disciples and he's breathing life through them into us. And then he says, forgive, forgive, forgive. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. We have been sent not to hold on to wrongs. We have been sent to forgive people. And the first person to forgive is probably yourself. Because we can look back on our lives and we can see all the stupid things that we've done. And we can't change any of the stuff in the past. But what we can do is we can forgive. We can say to ourselves, look, it's how I got to where I am. And for all those mistakes, here I am and this is a sacred place. This is the place where God breathes the spirit into me. And it's not where I could be or where I might have been or if I had done other things, I would be someplace else. It's right now. Right where we are, right in the, in, in the set of, of problems and difficulties that is our life, Jesus breathes the spirit into us and he says, forgive, forgive yourself and then start forgiving everybody else. Because unless you forgive, the power and the love of God cannot flow through you. And if it can't flow through you, you can't do the job that Jesus has just given us to do. So forgive, he says. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And what's the purpose of all of this? The purpose of all of this is for us to know that the one who died on that cross is truly alive. And we know that because these people in that upper room from whom we have received our faith in direct line. People have told people who have told people. Uh, but but it, if Jesus hadn't stood in front of them in the flesh, they would never have done anything but run and hide and forget they ever knew Jesus, except maybe to look back occasionally as elderly people and say, wasn't he a nice guy? Too bad how he ended up. But that's not what happened. These people left that, enter, that, that upper room. You never hear about another locked door in the gospel after that first one when he walked through, it, it came into that room and stood among them because they knew he lived. It wasn't a ghost. It wasn't an apparition. They couldn't have even thought in those terms. He was real. He was alive. And he was so vibrantly alive that it changed their whole lives. They left that room to do the job Jesus gave them to do to bring the good news of his love to the ends of the earth and to reconcile and forgive others. And that's what we must do too. Because Jesus didn't come to that upper room to, to, to have a, a welcome home party. He came into that upper room to give hope, to give life, and to give a mission to those who are his disciples, and that includes us. And so what does that have to say to Chris and to his family who are staggering still in the grief of his loss? What it has to say is that his death, as painful as it has been, is not the end, because Chris was a disciple of Christ. He was a follower of Jesus. And he did not go into oblivion. He went from life to life. And the life he lived in a nursing home with his Alzheimer's, not knowing his beloved friends, not knowing even the names of his, of his children, or sometimes calling one by the other name, that wasn't fullness of life. But that's what he's promised now. And what his loved ones have is the promise that life always wins. And the pledge 
that that comes to us through is the risen Lord who stood among his grieving disciples, crushed by loss, oppressed by fear, disillusioned and disappointed. And as he came into that group, he said, peace be with you. I live. And because I live, so do you. Because I live, so does Chris. Because I live, all who die believing in me have life in my name. That is the message of Easter. And that is also our mission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Why? So that they might have life. Amen. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the Because he lives, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm. This child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he Death gives way to victory.
is tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds a future and life is worth a living just because Our affirmation of faith. I, I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As God's children, as heirs to his promise, as citizens of, of the kingdom of the Lord, we now bring our prayers before the Father, through the Son, in the Spirit, trusting that the answer to those prayers will be swift and powerful. And our response is, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. Gather into your kingdom here on earth all those who are lost and scattered, wandering without direction or hope. God, God of all goodness, goodness hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Turn the hearts of all who wield temporal power to the righteousness of God and guide them in the paths of righteousness. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. Satisfy the needs of the hungry and lift up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit and through the generosity of your holy people. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. Let kindness abound in our hearts and in our families. Let compassion prevail that our lives might be in Christ a light shining in our dark world. Let us pray to the Lord, God, God of all goodness, goodness, hear our prayer. We pray for the coming of the reign of Christ in our world and in our hearts. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. God, God of all goodness, goodness hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heal all who struggle with illness, hardship, or conflict, that they may receive restoration for their minds and bodies, release from their burdens, and mending of their brokenness. Let us pray to the Lord, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. We pray for the health and safety of all medical professionals, especially Dr. Donna McNamara, Dr. Kevin Frisson, Dr. John Thorndike and his wife, Dr. Tara Schatzel hill and for our nurses, Mertella Monroe, Alexandra Woodruff and her husband, Dmitry Shemkolovich, Carla Quinlan, Paula Snyder, Peg Cornell, Andy Strangey, Libby Black, Jill Felter, Claudia Wenger, and Mary Lou Prinzivali. God, God of all goodness, goodness hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of our congregation. God, God of all goodness, goodness hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Creator God, hear the prayers which we have prayed and let the light of your Son Jesus flow into our world through this little church of yours and through each one of us who worship here. And may the prayers which we pray live in our hearts as we, we send them up to you like incense. Give us trust, give us confidence, and give us faith in your fatherly care for us. We ask this in Jesus' name and through the power of the Spirit. There, one God with you forever and ever. And we can all say amen. And taught by Jesus that we are your children too by adoption we pray the prayer that he taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and we can all say amen and now, um, if you were here, we would be taking up a collection 
Uh, we'll still do that, but virtually. So if, if you would take a moment now as you listen to the beautiful offertory music that Susan has prepared to either write us a check or give online or do something, make a decision to support this church so that we can help others. Without you, we can't do the types of things that we do to help other people in need. So thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you for helping us because you are a part of the good work of this church.
Creator God, take the gifts which we offer. Take us with those gifts. Use us, use our hands, use our lives, use our time, use every moment that we live to serve you, our Father God, and to proclaim the kingdom of your Son, Jesus. We ask this in his name and through the power of the Spirit with you there, one God forever and ever, and we can all say, Amen. And now, we are about to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood. So if you don't have bread and wine with you right now, please get a little bit, because we are about to, to celebrate the meal that he has given us in memory of him. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, it is always good for us to give you thanks and to give you praise in Jesus' name. In the midst of conflict and division, we know that it is you who turn our minds to thoughts of peace. Your spirit changes our hearts. Enemies begin to speak to one another. Those who are estranged join hands in friendship, and nations seek the way of peace together. Your spirit is at work when understanding puts an end to strife, when hatred is quenched by mercy, and when vengeance gives way to forgiveness. For this, we should never cease to thank and praise you. We join now at the choirs of heaven as they sing forever to your glory. God of power and might, we praise you, you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word through whom you have made the universe. He is the hand you reach out to sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. God, our Father, we had wandered far from you, but through your Son, we have brought, been brought back to you. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way back to one another. Therefore, we celebrate this love that Christ has gained for us. We ask you to sanctify these gifts by the power of your spirit as we now fulfill your son's command. Before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted, he gave you thanks. He took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which will be given up for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup full of wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do this in memory of me. God, our Father, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection and bring you the gift you have given us, this offering of praise and thanksgiving. Therefore, we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son, Fill us with his spirit through our sharing in this meal. May he take away all that divides us. 
May his spirit keep us always in communion with our brother and sister Christians throughout the world. Father, make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You have gathered us here around the table of your son in the fellowship with your whole church in that new world where the fullness of your peace will be revealed. Gather people of every race, language, and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever, and we can all say, Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and happy are we who have been called to this meal. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you, but you say the word, and in and through your Son, through no merit of our own, we are healed. May this, the body and blood of Christ, bring each one of us who receive it to life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, through this communion which we have received, strengthen us for the mission your Son has given us to bring the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth. We ask this in his name. He is Lord with you forever and ever. Amen. And now, please bow down your heads to pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face to you and have mercy on you. May the Lord show you kindness and give you peace. May the Lord bless each one of us, the Lord who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to bring the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. This joyful